In the early morning hours of New Year's Day in 2021, Jessica Nicole Stacks went hunting in a boat with her boyfriend in the swift waters of Mississippi's Little Tallahatchie River. A few hours later, her boyfriend says Jessica got out of the boat intending to walk back miles through marshlands to a bridge. She was never seen again. Welcome to Missing. I am Tim, here today alone in this intro. But don't worry, Lance Reinstierna joins us in the conversation today about the disappearance of Jessica Nicole Stacks from Union City, Mississippi on January 1st, 2021. Jessica has blonde hair and green eyes, is 5'4 and between 110 and 125 pounds. If you have any information in Jessica's disappearance, please call the Union County Sheriff's Office at 662-534-1943. And Jennifer Amell also joins us in this conversation. And Jessica's case came to us by way of private investigations for the missing and researched by private investigations for the missing. So please follow them on social media and check out what they do. There are links in the show notes. And the nonprofit is also always accepting donations. And we're also looking for new volunteers, specifically a grant writer and possibly some researchers. So check it out at investigationsforthemissing.org. And if you'd like to hear Missing without any ads at all, there is a link to our premium feed in our show notes. You can check it out at missing.supportingcast.fm. Thanks a lot for listening, everybody. We really appreciate it. Please follow us at missingcsm on social media. Welcome back to the podcast, Jennifer Amell. Jennifer, how are you today? Doing very well. Thanks for having me back. Of course. We are back here to talk about the unfortunate disappearance of yet another individual. Um, this one taking place in January of 2021, Jessica Nicole Stacks. Uh, but before we get into this, can you tell us how Jessica's story came to us? Yes. Jessica's case was submitted to private investigations for the missing by Jessica's aunt and mother. Um, this research was conducted by Kathleen Studer. So thank you so much, Kathleen. Yes. Big shout out to Kathleen. Thanks a lot. And Jessica went missing on January 1st, 2021 from New Albany, Mississippi. She was 28 at the time of her disappearance. She was born on June 11th, 1992. A Caucasian female, 5'5 five five in height, about 110 to 115 pounds, with strawberry blonde hair, green eyes, and the clothing she was wearing is unknown. She does have some distinguishing characteristics, being piercings. She has piercings in her ear, tongue, and nose. She has some tattoos, a Playboy bunny on her left pelvis with the words Lil Sis, that's L I L. S-I-S under it, a butterfly on her right hand beside her thumb, the word Kaylee on her back, K-A-Y-L-E-I-G-H, Brayden, B-R-A-Y-D-N on her wrist, Kobe, C-O-B-I-E, with a puzzle piece on her forearm, love on her calf, and a tribal lower back tattoo. And Jessica was born to Kathy and Jerry Swainer, who separated when Jessica was a child. She has two older brothers, Jason and Justin Swainer, as well as a much younger brother who Jessica was very close to. She graduated from Houston High School in 2010 and went on to graduate from Itawamba Community College. And enter into the life of Jessica Jacob Stacks. On March 3rd of 2015, she married Jacob and they had three children together. 
Unfortunately, she separated with Jacob and began dating an individual named Jerry Wayne Baggett, and they made their relationship Facebook official on May 8th of 2019, and then made it official again on October of 2019. They had a bit of an age difference. Jessica was 17 years younger than Jerry, and it is unknown if Jerry was previously married, but he does have a son and a daughter. So let's discuss the day that Jessica disappeared, which was a Friday, New Year's Day of 2021. These events come from Jerry's story, like his version of events. Most of it is like unsubstantiated. You can't say for a fact that it happened, but this is what he told law enforcement. And what he told law enforcement was that he and Jessica planned to go hunting very early on January 1st, 2021. Jerry decided to borrow his friend Willie Stinson's boat. And according to Jerry, Willie came with them to help put the boat in the water. And the boat did not have a motor or oars or paddles that are visible. And apparently a small flat shovel was used to steer the boat. And according to surveillance footage, Jerry and Jessica pulled up that morning to a West Union one stop on Highway 30 west of New Albany between the intersections of County Road 515 and County Road 46. That was at the very early time of 526, according to the timestamp on that footage on January 1st of 2021. Jerry's pickup truck is seen towing a small fishing boat and it pulls up to the gas station. And in this video, Jerry gets out of the truck and walks uh, backward from the truck, heading toward the boat. He steps over that little part uh, where the trailer hitches to the truck, and it seems like he's either grabbing something out of the boat or he's maybe going inside the convenience store to pay for gas or something. I'm not really sure. But as he's crossing over the trailer, the passenger side door on this pickup tra- truck opens just a crack and you can see the face of someone who looks female um, and she looks similar enough to Jessica. She has a, a dark ball cap on, but it's really not enough of a resolution in the video to like make out her features very clear- clearly. So many believe that this is Jessica, but it's again, not confirmed. Right. So by all accounts so far, This is uh, something that is a fact because we're looking at it in a surveillance video. We know the time. Even if the timestamp isn't down to the minute, we still know it's in the 5 to 5.30 a.m. range. And if we are to believe that they decided to go hunting that morning from the boat together, then there'd be no reason at this point to think that that's not Jessica or Jerry or, you know, the the plan to go hunting in the boat was still on, on track. There's nothing nothing to really go against that at this point. Yeah. And according to Jerry's story, his friend Willie, whose boat this was, he also accompanied them to help put the boat in the water. But from the video surveillance footage, we can't see him in the truck, although it is kind of dark, so he may have been in the truck. I mean, there wouldn't be much room for him to sit in a pickup truck. Like, they may have had jump seats or something, like behind the driver and passenger side seat. This moment, like on the video, is is so haunting to me because otherwise we have no sign of Jessica that morning at all. It's almost like she knew she had to get on camera. To pop her head out like that because we're looking at the still of it and it is just, just enough of a face sticking out where you can make out that this is most likely a female leaning out, wearing a baseball cap. Yeah, it, it is it is a pretty haunting image now that you say it. Also, can I just get an opinion here? Is it just as easy to use a shovel as a paddle as opposed to buying a paddle? I imagine it would be harder to use a shovel. Well, I think it was to steer that they yeah. that the shovel was used. So I think theoretically, if you're moving along, that should work almost as good. Yeah, and keep in mind that the river was like pretty swift at this time of year. There was a lot of rainfall. So I don't think that they would necessarily have to paddle like they were on a lake or something. They just flow with the river and then put the shovel to like rudder the boat. (laughs) Okay. Okay. I can see that. I gotcha. And Jerry says that after getting gas at the one stop, he and Jessica and Willie put a small boat into the little Tallahatchie River at County Road 46, approximately a mile and a half from the one stop. And the river in this area here is a straight channel. 
built by the Army Corps of Engineers for flood control in the 1930s. Yeah, if you look on the map, it's not a regular kind of twisty-turny river that would happen naturally. It's like pretty straight. And do we know if there had been any rain or anything that had caused the water to be like super shallow or or maybe even um, above the uh, the normal you know water line? Yeah, yeah. I think during this time of year in the winter in Mississippi, there's like instead of snow, there's a lot of rainfall. But we do know that the Little Tallahatchie River was pretty swollen from previous rains and it was running faster than normal. Um, the average depth uh, for the year is about 12 feet. And the flood stage is at 25 feet. And on January 1st of 2021, it was a few feet below the flood stage. So running pretty high. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's pretty deep. Yeah, about 20 feet or so. Yeah. So just to reinforce what you said prior, everything that happened, the events on January 1st, these are all from Jerry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this is all according to his story. There's like a couple... Things that point to Jessica being there, which we'll get into, but they're like deeply suspect. Okay. So according to Jerry, Jessica gave her cell phone to Willie and the plan was to use Jerry's cell phone to call Willie on Jessica's cell phone when the two were ready to be picked up again after their boating hunting trip. And Willie drove Jerry's truck away after dropping off Jessica and Jerry They get in the boat and they were off and Willie departed with Jerry's truck, according to Jerry. Yeah, I find this uh, pretty interesting (laughs) Uh, fact, according to Jerry's story, that Jessica gives up her cell phone to Willie. I guess he didn't have a phone, but this becomes like an interesting detail as we get into like her actual disappearance. Yeah, I mean, before the age of cell phones, you used to be able to just say, meet me here at a certain time. I'm sure that still could have worked um, with Willie if they really needed a ride from him. Yeah, it's, I mean, this was 2021. It was like a year ago, (laughs) or a little more than a year ago that this happened. And like what 28-year-old woman is like willingly going to part with her cell phone? And so according to Jerry, they put the boat in the river around 7 a.m. And sunrise was at 7.03 a.m. on January 1st at this location and it is believed that they were planning on hunting for deer or wild hogs from the boat. And uh, according to Mississippi Wildlife, Fishery, and Parks, it is technically illegal to hunt fur-bearing animals like deer from a motorized car or boat, which makes a whole lot of sense, kind of an insane visual. However, the boat that Jerry and Jessica were using did not have a motor and actually may have been exempt from that law. Yeah, it might be the reason that they didn't have any kind of like small outboard motor on it. Mm. So I guess the plan was to load any wild boar or deer onto the truck when when Willie came back. So they're not fishing. They're hunting right. for deer. From the water. From the water with a gun. So yeah, so their plan was to not fish, but in fact float down the river and shoot at deer that are... I guess, grazing along the river. Never heard of this kind of hunting, but it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Yeah, and and so in theory, if if that's what they did um, that day or other days, like uh, what would you do if you shot a deer? Uh, you have to stop the boat pretty fast, but if it's swift moving, it seems, it seems pretty challenging to stop the boat and pull it over to the appropriate side and then drag a, a half-dead or maybe dead deer onto the boat, like... Yeah, I'm very confused with that plan. Yeah, I was trying to work this out in my head as well. So you shoot the deer, and the deer is like the probably the lightest of the two, right? If you shoot a wild hog, um, you're probably not taking that down with one shot anyway. So you're firing multiple shots into the woods from your boat on the on the river. But um, okay, so you shoot the animal; it's dead. You somehow mark the location, then you get the boat to shore, and then you call Willie, and then you get the you go all the way back to where you're you're going to meet Willie. He comes out, helps you get the deer or the wild hog loaded onto something where you then bring it back to the truck and then you got to go back and get the boat too. Plans seem to be going like okay until about 7.03 a.m. I'm wondering if if Jessica was an avid hunter too. Like if she had done this type of hunting before or if it was characteristic of her to even accompany Jerry on his hunting trips. Like 
just put yourself in her position for a second. It's New Year's Day. So like you were up probably relatively late into the night celebrating the new year. And then you get up before the sun to go on this weird boat hunting trip. Seems strange, right? It's not mm. impossible, but. Yeah. No, it does seem strange. Um, yeah, I have no idea if, if Jessica hunted with with Jerry, but um, there's a one picture of her um, with a bo- in a boat holding a fish. So it seems like they at least fished together from a boat at, uh, at some point. Yeah. And according to Jerry's story, Jessica left the boat approximately one and a half to two miles downriver and climbed onto the north bank, which is the right side, uh, depending on the way they're going, of the river, reportedly around 10 a.m. And it is unknown why she left the boat. Yeah, this is where it gets even weirder, right? So this is all according to Jerry's uh, story of what happened, but he doesn't provide an explanation as to why Jessica would have wanted to exit the boat in the middle of nowhere and walk back miles um, to where she didn't have any to anybody to meet, didn't have a vehicle to get home, and didn't have a phone to call anybody. And what about the time frame? This was at 10 a.m. They got there at 7. So even if they got the boat in the water at 8, which I don't even think that that would be a reason, you know, for, uh, I don't know why it would be so long, but I'm just giving some benefit of the doubt here. Let's say they they get the boat into the water at 8. She leaves the boat at 10? Mm-hmm. At the most, two miles downriver. Mm-hmm. If you walk at a regular pace of like four to five miles an hour, in the definition of miles per hour, you will travel five miles in one hour if you're mm-hmm. walking at five, five miles per hour. Where's the lost time here? Yeah, there's definitely some missing time. Yeah, it definitely wouldn't take that long to get like at most two miles downriver, especially if the water was flowing more swiftly than usual. I don't even think you could stop the boat, like, you know, for, from getting two miles in that amount of time unless the boat, like, was banked, you know, somewhere. I mean, I'm, I guess that's possible. Yeah, it is possible. I mean, they must have had to bank the boat for Jessica to get out of the boat, if that's mm. true. So, yeah. Really weird. So that, that boat would have had to have been traveling two to three miles per hour. Mm-hmm very slow have you ever driven two miles an hour you'd be riding the brake yeah (laughs) yes you're barely moving and jerry told law enforcement that jessica was going to either walk to the highway 30 bridge or back to county road 46 depending on what news agency was reporting this information yeah and i'm not sure if that's just a journalist's mistake or if jerry was saying different things to different journalists it's hard to sort of parse uh, what that could mean but I think that this highway 30 would have been what approximately it would be like a little bit farther away than backtracking uh, to county road 46. Now according to Jerry he stated that he still could see the CR 46 bridge not the highway 30 bridge the county road 46 bridge that was he could still see that that was within his sight when he exited the boat after Jessica exited the boat. Yeah, so it means that they haven't traveled that far away from uh, the County Road 46 bridge. Although if it was like clear visibility that morning, he could still see like probably over a mile behind because remember this river isn't like twisting. There's no turns or like foliage really to see beyond it. Um, it's pretty straight ahead. So they could still be like, a little over a mile away. Okay, but Jerry did not exit the boat where Jessica exited the boat. Yes, I mean, according according to him. Right, and according to Jerry, he continued on the river for another mile and a half to two miles and then exited the boat from the south side bank and called his son for a ride. So I don't know why he didn't call Willie, um, and I don't know why he left the boat in the river because then it floated down um, still another couple miles, it looks like. Yeah, so he just, like, keeps going for a couple miles and then just, like, abandons ship and then calls his son. Right. That's strange behavior, too. Is that confirmed that that his son actually picked him up? No, it's not. 
I don't know if law enforcement knows this information and, and it's just not public, but it's not confirmed that he made a call to his son or if it was even his son who picked him up, but somebody picked Jerry up. So I want to recap real quick uh, to keep everything straight. They get into the water at around 7 a.m. That's when the boat launches and about apparently two and a half, three hours later or something at about 10 a.m. They've gone one and a half to two miles downriver and that's where Jessica exits the boat. Um, we don't know if they docked the boat or or she swam to shore, but she exited the boat. Jerry continues on for another one and a half to two miles where he then exits the boat when he can see the... Um, County Road 46 Bridge that's within his sight. He could see County Road 46 Bridge from where he dropped off Jessica, but not, I guess, from the additional distance he went in the boat by himself. Okay, but it's a very, it's a straight shot on the river uh, for the most part. Yeah. And then the, the boat continues on after Jerry calls his son for a ride. Even though that's not his boat, he mm-hmm. let it go down the river and... After coming up with a plan with Willie, here's Jessica's phone. I'll call you. We'll do this. Meet us here. He doesn't follow that plan, and he calls his son. Right. Okay. And apparently Jerry was inconsistent with where he stated that Jessica was, I I guess, walking off towards either the Highway 30 bridge or back to County Road 46. Yeah, it's so bizarre to me that Jerry had nothing to say about why she had gotten off the boat or what her plan was after getting off the boat either. It's bizarre. And at 10 p.m. that night, Jessica is reported missing by Jerry's daughter's boyfriend. And there is no explanation of the delay in reporting her disappearance. But actually, that doesn't seem like that long of a delay, um, you know, uh, just based on the other cases that we cover. Yeah, I mean, if they are truly worried, I would imagine that they kind of would have waited, would have called around to see if she had gone to a friend's or family's uh, home, or maybe even searched themselves before Mm -hmm. calling the police. Not exactly sure what they were doing. I do find it interesting that it wasn't Jerry himself who called police, but his daughter's boyfriend. So it shows you that, yeah, it was spoken about between Jerry and his daughter and her boyfriend. Um, right. So there, there must have been some concern so much that a non-family member made the phone call. Yeah, maybe it was actually Jerry's daughter's boyfriend who picked him up too. Like, I guess, son-in-law type. Right, that could be. Yeah, maybe there was like just a miscommunication there. And then searchers immediately hit the river and searched the four-mile area between the County Road 46 Bridge and Highway 30 Bridge, also known as the Rocky Ford Bridge. And they searched until 3 a.m. that night and then started again at daybreak. And they did it through some pretty um, adverse conditions. There was rain, freezing temperatures, so that water must have been pretty brutal to uh, search in if they ended up going down in there. Uh, Search and rescue divers weren't immediately able to search the river, though, because of the dangerousness of the water, which tells you something. Search and rescue divers aren't going in that water because it's flowing at such a high pace. So in lieu of that, they brought in some drones and thermal imaging cameras that were used to try to locate Jessica, I guess, in the uh, in the in the woods next to the river. Were they trying to see like maybe in the water as well with the with the cameras? Yeah, I mean, probably. But if she I, I don't know exactly what would be picked up on a thermal imaging camera if someone was deceased and in the water, like your temperature cools down so much. Um, So yeah, I don't know if if they would have been able to pick that up with that kind of technology. This case reminds me a lot of um, Crystal Bailey's case out of Vermont. Do you guys remember that one? It was like uh, a woman and her friend, Crystal and her friend, were driving kind of recklessly and got into an accident and they were inebriated so they tried to like flee the emts and crystal just jumped into the river in the middle of the winter was never heard from again it's like and in in the same way the river at that time was like very swift and very high because of a snow melt 
Um, and the reason I bring up Crystal Bailey's case is that the river might have played a larger role in this than we might imagine. Yeah, in Crystal's case, it, it seemed uh, somewhat cut and dry that she, I guess, got into the river herself. This this case, I have to say, Jessica's case seems a bit more suspicious at this point. Yeah, but there was quite a turnout in far, as far as um, search and rescue. We had personnel from the Mississippi Wildlife and Fisheries, the Union County Search and Rescue, Mississippi Highway Patrol, and the Mississippi Bureau, Bureau of Investigation. So, like... Props to law enforcement and all of these other organizations for like organizing so quickly and getting out there. And so divers were finally able to search on January 9th in the 42 degree river water. And in the area Jerry described where Jessica got out of the boat, they did find a set of footprints as well as a green lacrosse style boot size women's six to seven gloves and a jacket. Yeah, so that's the only like real sign we have of Jessica. It's not to say that she was wearing those things when they were placed there, but yeah, that's definitely articles that belonged to Jessica. Per her mom? Yeah, so yeah, her mom saw the items and she agrees that they were, uh, that they belonged to her daughter. In the case that the, those were the clothes she was wearing, why would they be there and she isn't? Right, You know, yeah. like, I don't understand that. What did she do? She like got off the boat and shed her shoes and her her jacket and her gloves and just like walked into the wilderness. Well, had she d- exited the boat and if she swam or if she got wet at all, maybe maybe it was reasonable to think she didn't want to keep the wet clothing on and maybe her boots were full of water. But why wouldn't you know why what now you're now you have no shoes on as well and you're what well, had to have put you in that position where it was so necessary for you to walk into the into the wilderness with no shoes on. Mm-hmm. I know it's Mississippi, but it's still January and it's cold. Yeah. Yeah. Hypothermia could have played a part. Um, I know that's speculation at this point, but we do know that people who are hypothermic will often strip down uh, naked um, and, you know, their bodies will be found in the wilderness. Yeah. And a, a couple of questions that we can address in our hidden opinions version of this show on the subscription service. Uh, one of them is, why would Jerry let her go into the wilderness without a cell phone at all? Mm-hmm. Do you remember what they were hunting? Deer and wild boar. Yeah, they they can be pretty heavy and uh, pretty dangerous, too. Yeah. Hey, honey, whatever you're going off to do that's so sudden that you want to do, you probably shouldn't because we're in uh, an incredibly swelled stretch of water uh, and there's wild boar in the woods and you don't mm-hmm. have a cell phone. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if it's appropriate to mention here, but I, I did once go boar hunting with my father and he insisted that I not. <laughs> <laughs> this is in the uh, panhandle of Florida, which is. A nutty experience, but he insisted like alongside the hunting rifle I was using that I carry a sidearm and a bowie knife just in case (laughs) they're that dangerous. Despite the name of the river here, the Little Tallahatchie River, it is certainly not little. Uh, If you look at the map of uh, Mississippi and you look at that river, it runs right through it. it. It's it might not be like a grand river like the, the like the Mississippi River, but it continues for quite a stretch. Yeah, it sure does. And it's like not a creek. It's it's pretty wide too. But let's get back into those items that were found of Jessica's. There's something very interesting with her boot. Right. So news reports stated law enforcement described it as if her boots were cut off of her. And that's uh, quote, quote unquote there, cut off of her. So th- that is confusing to me i don't really understand uh what that means or why rain boots would be cut off of someone or why would they would be cut at all there was some speculation um on various forums on the internet that the boots were cut so that jerry himself who i'm assuming had larger feet could fit into them and leave prints in her size shoe but like if you did do that why would you leave the boot there too All we know about this, again, is coming from Jerry, where he stated that the boots were cut because that area of the boot was rubbing on Jessica's calf and irritating it. Yeah, I wonder if this had been done, like, prior to this day, like, if she wore those boots often when, you know, 
going out to fish or hunt or whatever. They're like, you know, they're too tall. I mean, she she was about five five, right? So I, I mean, that's that's not super tall. So I imagine if she was wearing boots, that's a possibility that they could be like irritating on her calf. Stop it. <laughs> I mean, the boots were cut off at the top because it was rubbing on Jessica's calf and irritating it. So how far down did he cut them? I mean, you're cutting like rubber boots. If it's, if it's going to irritate your calf, it's going to irritate further down anyway. You, you know what I'm saying? If you cut it. Yeah, that, that's my point, I think, as well. Like, have you ever cut like, a, like an uncomfortable tag off of a T-shirt and then it's more uncomfortable? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it's, <laughs> yeah, it's just like the cut part. Yeah. And then here in the picture of uh, Jessica on the boat um, fishing, I assume with Jerry, I, I don't know though. Uh, she is not wearing boots. She is wearing shorts and sneakers. Not no mm-hmm. no point there in particular. Just just uh, stating the fact of the picture. And we'll be right back after a quick word from our sponsors. Thanks to our sponsors, and now we're back to the program. And then about 50 yards from the boots was a tree that had cuts on it from a sharp object, as well as a breaker fuse about three inches long that was wedged into a tree. Yeah, so we're looking at a picture of the tree right now, which I'm sure we can put up on social media or something so you can see it. But so it's like a a tree that has um, a hollow um, in the middle of it where this breaker fuse is wedged into the tree and then on a sprouting branch on the left side there's a pair of gloves gloves kind of tucked um in between the small smaller branch and the trunk it's a bizarre like placement of items and why the breaker fuse some kind of marker could be like yeah what, what exactly would that be used for there's no idea it'd be used for a number of things right to to maintain power but nothing that that jerry and jessica were supposedly doing that morning right right yeah there was no machinery or electronics on the boat so maybe this was just like a random piece of uh machinery that was wedged into a tree i know it sounds weird the whole thing's weird um but uh, I i don't have any better explanation yeah the only thing i can think of is that there was like junk in the boat and Jerry needed a way to mark the place where Jessica left. And it seems weird that he would, if he was going to come back to it and needed a marker, um, why he would bring law enforcement to this place and then leave his weird marker there. It doesn't it doesn't make any sense either. Right. And this photo is like official evidence, I guess. Like, why was this photo even taken? Yeah. I mean, those are her gloves. Right. Very strange. Yeah. and And found pretty close to her boots, too. And the police were able to track the prints about 100 yards, also noting that there was a spot where it appeared someone sat on the ground for a while. And the footprints ended in some standing water near a crop field, and they couldn't pick up the trail from there. So it also has been described that the conditions where she hypothetically would have had to have walked through to get out of the river area would have been as challenging for anybody, including a well-equipped army ranger. So that's what some of the statements were saying, that that area would have been challenging even to a well-equipped army ranger. Yeah, I mean, if it's Mississippi and they've had a lot of rainfall, I imagine that the land is, like, mucky and, like, marshy, and you might sink in places or get your boot stuck in places, and you just have a difficult time getting back to the bridge, like even a few miles um, back up river. Oh, you guys, this is going to be an interesting episode of Hidden Opinions because I'm having a hard time containing myself here. Now, do you think that law enforcement were able to determine um, by the footprints uh, the weight of the person who made those footprints? That's a really good question. I think so. I think if you were to take those footprints and you were to do like a a cast of them and you were to see like, is this person walking more like a heel forward or like a front, like a ball of your foot forward? You could tell that. You could tell the weight just by comparing it to somebody else's. I'm. You could have multiple sized police officers go and walk through the same area of the woods and you can get the same um, 
within, I guess, a few pounds, right? The same structure, the same stature uh, of somebody. So, yeah, I, I think that's a really telling way to determine whether or not it's a petite female or a whatever larger statured man. Yeah, I mean, you could d- additionally tell um, by the stride of the print how tall the person yeah. is. Unless, like, if the footprints were faked by Jerry or someone else, like, they may have taken that into account and, like, shortened their stride. But, yeah, I feel like there's more information to be gleaned from the footprints. I think so. And also the spot where it appeared someone sat on the ground for a while. Mm-hmm. That one especially. Yeah, yeah. Some search dogs could... uh figure out if that was jessica jerry or what yeah i don't know like does doesn't water throw off scent trails depends what kind of dog i think the we've heard reports that cadaver dogs um can smell deceased people up to 100 feet in water um but i know search dogs are a little bit different right yeah if they're trying to figure out her direction of travel from where the footprints ended or even if they caught a scent right be interesting to know but the boat was empty and was located the next day on the second right and about a mile down river from the highway 30 slash rocky ford bridge correct yes so this was just the day after her disappearance and before the more vast search i think that happened on the ninth but yes law enforcement did recover the boat and in the boat they found jessica's purse and her keys well that's really confusing now because you know, like what Jessica's just walking off by herself without her phone, without her purse, without her keys. Yeah. And no mention of like an argument or altercation. I mean, maybe if there was some kind of altercation, you could buy that. But I don't understand. I, I, I'd have to say Jerry's story at this point, very, very suspicious. Yeah, indeed. And like our researcher made a note here Um that she wonders why a woman might have brought actually brought her purse on the boat because it's a small boat. It's not very sturdy. The chances of tipping are probably pretty great, and I wouldn't want to bring valuables myself. I mean, maybe a phone would be necessary, but to like bring your wallet and, and everything when it could easily have just been left in a truck that was going to pick you up at the end of the trip anyway just seems a little bizarre. Well, I don't know how many times they've done this, but there is this picture of Jessica on a boat. Apparently she caught a fish or someone did and passed her the fish so that she could take the picture. Um, I feel like they've done this before. I feel like they've taken a boat into the water before. She's got a little backpack in this picture. Um, I don't know how often you two have been in a boat of this size. Um, I haven't that often. Uh, And even still... I will take some sort of uh, container that I know is like waterproof where I would put something like my license or a, my cell phone, um, you know, anything I, I felt I would I might need when I'm on the boat, but I wouldn't just kind of leave it in my pockets. I think it it and then again, like I've only gone on a boat like this just a handful of times in my life, but that just was something that was a no brainer for me to get some sort of plastic bag, like airtight bag to put your cell phone in. Uh, and anything else that you wouldn't want damaged by water in case that happened. So I'm just wondering, did they have that? And I guess they didn't have that because she took her purse. Because my point is, is if if they had that on the boat, anything of value that was in her purse, she would have taken out if she wanted to take with her and put in this one airtight bag, right? One would think, yeah. Yeah, logically that makes sense um, that you would have that bag. I mean, I don't know what kind of preparation they... Uh they had at this moment also i don't think she was expecting to go into the water and i mean unless she was you know but i don't know like i'm pretty sure i've been on boats where i didn't take that precaution because i didn't go into the water but let me ask you a question then we can get into it more on hidden opinions when you got onto this boat was it to go fishing at the break of dawn or to go hunting at the break of dawn I, no, I've been fishing once at the break of dawn, uh, <laughs> never hunting, period. Uh, you know, no no judgment against either. It's just not my thing. I feel like everything leading up to these this detail about her taking the purse on the boat is weird to me because they had a they had a, a pretty good plan, at least like well thought out with how they were going to communicate with Willie. And they, they had enough of a plan to 
wake up that early in the first place and go on this trip and and get the boat in the water at 7 a.m. All of those things would suggest to me that when the decision time has come to figure out whether or not you're taking your purse on the boat, you see where my confusion is? Like everything else seemed like they knew kind of what they were doing. Yeah, there seemed to be some sort of plan. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. I'm stuck. One thing I find interesting is that Willie actually turned in Jessica's phone to the sheriff, um, apparently. And uh, and also Jerry had a hunting gun with him that day in the river, and that has also been taken into evidence by the Union County Sheriff. Um, does that mean that this is, you know, an active, suspicious disappearance? Or I guess not necessarily? Seems that way. I don't know what the official des- designation of this case is, like if sh- if she's like missing, endangered, or if it's a suspected homicide. We don't really know. Um, but it's interesting that they did collect the gun. And it's unknown if they have run any tests on the gun, or if there's been any forensic exam of Jessica's phone or any of the other individuals' phones. Yeah, or like the boat too. Did they, you know, analyze the boat? Did they swab for DNA or find blood or like any evidence of a struggle that took place on the boat? I'd be interested to know that too. Union County Sheriff Edwards has expressed frustration at the divide in the community since Jessica disappeared. He has stated that there's no evidence of foul play in this case, despite many accusations and speculation on social media and, I guess, podcasts. It's hard not to with this set of events you know i understand yeah and some of that frustration appears to be with the lack of progress in the investigation and the lack of communication between law enforcement and jessica's family which is a very familiar story uh here on these uh, on these airwaves i mean i don't think there's ever been a a case that we've covered where they said communication's great Mm mm-hmm And additionally, Jessica's family believes that Jerry did have something to do with Jessica's disappearance or at least knows what happened to her. It's very obvious to to me that that's probably the case. And the family also believes that not only does Jerry know, but Jerry's friends, Willie, and also another individual named Billy Jack, they believe that both of those two individuals know what happened to Jessica, as well as other people in the community, but... They're too afraid to come forward to say what they know. And it appears that there's no identified suspects or people of interest at this time in the, all, in the eyes of law enforcement. Again, like we don't know how they're investigating this de- disappearance. I mean, the sheriff did say that there was no evidence of foul play, but that doesn't mean they don't think it. And then on Sunday, February 21st, 2021, which was maybe six, seven weeks after Jessica went missing, a call was made by someone riding an ATV that they saw a body under the Rocky Ford Bridge. And the caller was asked to remain on scene while the sheriff's department responded. But when they arrived, there was no sign of the ATV rider, no sign that an ATV had been there, and a body was not located. So you think that was somebody who maybe knew some, like they didn't say it was Jessica Stacks or Mm -hmm. anything related to the case. They just like called in a false body to the sheriff's department. Strange. Yeah, there's a lot of unpacking I think you could do with that one, right? Like, is it someone who who knows Jessica was in the river, um, made a call because searched thoroughly enough they would find her in that location? That caller Mm -hmm. maybe knew that? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Or maybe that was somebody's guilty conscience trying, like, not to say exactly what they knew, but, like, kind of lead law enforcement because no progress had been made um, in finding her. Or maybe it was completely random, and the person who called had no idea and just read the reports in the newspaper, which I'm going to say I think is actually the most likely thing. Probably, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we see all the time that people try to insert themselves in cases that they have no information on. Yeah, I wouldn't want to have been the uh, police officer that arrived at that scene. Doesn't that just give you like a really spooky feeling? Yeah, I'm picturing like a misty, yeah, like, bridge, riverbank, green waters. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and there's just nobody there, and and no sign of an ATV, no body. They're looking around. Like the first thing I would think is like I just got set up for a trap here. Right. Right. Yeah. 
and law enforcement hasn't come up with any new evidence since the first 48 hours. And although it is an active case, there are not any active searches for Jessica by law enforcement. Jessica's mother, Kathy, does not believe that Jessica went missing willfully. Mm -hmm. And another like very sad thing to note is that January 2nd was Jessica's younger brother's 15th birthday. We don't know his name, but he is on the autism spectrum and he and Jessica had like a super close bond and Kathy, her mother, just knows that Jessica would not have missed his birthday and upset him like that. And Jessica's father sadly died on September 19th, 2021, without ever finding out what happened to his daughter. And Jessica's three children are now living with a relative in Texas as well. So her poor brother doesn't understand where his sister went. He's on the autism spectrum. Uh, The father died without knowing what happened to his daughter. Uh, The three children are living with a relative in Texas. And somebody out there is just living their life. Somebody out there has just moved on from whatever happened to Jessica. Yeah. um, There is another thing to bring up that may be a little bit controversial. Um, But according to Jessica's mother, Kathy, she posted on social media some pictures of her daughter, Jessica. And these pictures are pretty disturbing. Um, Jessica looks beat up. She has a black eye. She has cuts on her forehead. They seem to be from two separate incidents. And Kathy says that, well, she insinuates that Jerry was abusive to Jessica and was violent toward her. But Jessica had never reported any domestic violence. I mean, does it, it barely looks like her. Yeah, I wonder. These pictures look like Jessica was somehow trying to document her injuries, mm-hmm. too. Which, you know, victims are instructed to do after they are injured. Um, just for any kind of legal process that has to happen. So Jessica, for sure, was violently abused. We just aren't totally sure who did it. But um, Kathy seems to believe it was Jerry. And if you have any information in the disappearance of Jessica Stacks, you can submit a tip to Detective Jimmy Edwards of the Union County Sheriff's Department at 662-534-1943. And it's, it's just so tragic to hear that Jessica was violently abused by somebody and that a report was never made. If you yourself are a victim of domestic violence or you know someone who is, you can reach out to the National Domestic Violence Hotline at 1-800-799-7233.